What's up everyone? It's Matt Martin with The Grass Factor. Today we are doing a video on kind of a hot topic. So let's just jump right into it. So today I want to get into the ins and outs of organic fertilizers. Uh, what are they? What do they do? How do they help turf grass? What's their selling point? What are their weaknesses? They all exist in the organic fertilizer world. So let's kind of take it step by step. All right. So first off, organic fertilizers are, you know, basically any fertilizer out there is going to supply micro and or macronutrients to the soil to be utilized by the plant, whatever plant you're applying it to. Uh, you know, in my instance, that would be turf grass. So, you know, we got, we've got the, the fertilizers that are, that are supplying the nutrients, right? Uh, and the way these, these, these nutrients can be derived, it can come uh, either inorganically uh, through different you know, petroleum compounds or it can come organically through uh, a, a couple of different processes. So the most popular organic fertilizers on the market are going to be biosolids. That will be your melorganite. Um, then you also have uh, animal manures, uh, you know, pure animal manures. Uh, that would be like uh, chicken litter uh, or anything that's derived from cow or sheep or goat manure. Um, and then there's also some where, uh, you know, bone meal is used as a precursor, you know, parts, different parts of the animal, the hooves uh, can be used as a, as a precursor to, to the fertilizers as well. So. When it comes down to it, you know, we've got, we've got organic ferts and then we've got synthetic ferts. And what we need to know, what are the pros and cons of each? So I'll start with the synthetic since that's what's mostly used out there in the market. Uh, synthetic fertilizers are relatively cheap. They are very quick in their response time. So if you apply 4600, you know in a two week time frame you're going to see results of your application. That's quick. Um, the same thing if you want to put down an actual one pound of nitrogen per thousand square feet and you want to do it with urea 4600, that's going to be relatively cheap per acre to do that. Um, the other thing about, you know, it's cheap, it's quick, um, and it's also very predictable. Synthetic fertilizers are going to be very predictable as far as the results you get. Um, you know, if you apply um, a one pound rate, you know what a one pound rate is going to give you. It's going to look that way very consistently. Beyond predictability, another thing we could, we could say about synthetic ferts as being an advantage is the turf grass is not going to know one way or another where the nitrogen is being derived from. So this can be a bit of a pro for both the organic and synthetic fertilizers, you know, the plants cannot tell the difference. They have no idea which is which. All they know is, you know, ammonium is available, nitrate is available, and uh, it, it will utilize it. So I guess that'll push us into the organic uh, column here to, to talk about, you know, why, why organic fertilizers carry such a, a positive reputation. And first and foremost, you know, you're definitely minimizing environmental impact, you know, so it's, it's safe to apply organic fertilizers. It is very unlikely that you're going to be able to over apply or an organic fertilizer and cause an issue. So in that regard, it's relatively safe. They have low salt indexes. Um, so there's very little risk of a burn potential. Whereas if you're applying 
you know, urea or ammonium sulfate or ammonium nitrate or potassium chloride. Those have very high salt indexes. Therefore, you can get that, that tip burn effect or even, you know, completely kill the, uh, kill the grass or the plant in general because of, of how much salt exists in that compound. So organic fertilizers are very safe. Um, they are naturally slow release and probably the, uh, the best thing about an organic fertilizer is that it's actually going to condition the soil. And what I mean by that is adding organic matter into the soil is going to naturally increase uh, microbe populations. Uh, as those microbes consume um, the biosolids or chicken litter, uh, the byproduct is going to be, you know, uh, ammonium and nitrate, your, you know, your gases and your, your nitrogen source available to the plant. And it's also going to have uh, carbon as a byproduct and that decomposed organic matter um, is going to improve that soil structure. It's going to improve cation exchange capacity and allow that soil to hold on to uh, other forms of nutrients and water for longer periods of time. Uh, so that's one of the big, big positives of it. So, I mean, these are all pretty much, you know, what, what you can expect to see as far as, uh, you know, the pros of synthetics and the pros of or organic fertilizers. Now let's jump into the negatives. Um, and there's a thousand different arguments as to why synthetic fertilizers are bad. Um, what it comes down to really and truly is that they can be misused. Um, I'm not even gonna write these down because I think everybody knows kind of the drawbacks to using, using synthetic fertilizers. They're very easy to misuse. They're very easy to over apply. Um, synthetic fertilizers are going to be more prone to leaching um, because when they are dissolved into water, the reaction that typically takes place uh, makes it more prone to movement. And that can lead to, you know, movement towards freshwater streams that can lead towards movement to uh, drinking water supplies. So, Synthetic fertilizers, there is a, a great chance of movement. There's a great chance of misapplication. Um, through misapplication, what can sometimes happen, it can leave the soil or plants depleted in other needed nutrients. So if you're out there and you're only supplying nitrogen over and over and over and over to the grass without any other uh, nutrient, then you're probably going to see a decline in the plant over time. Part of that could be due to salt accumulation. Part of that could be due to potassium deficiencies starting to creep up. So, you know, you have to be careful with what exactly uh, you're doing as far as your, your application. So from there, I think we can talk about the disadvantages of organic fertilizers. Um, the you know, really what it, what it comes down to with, uh, what it comes down to with organic fertilizer and its cons, um, one, it's very unpredictable as far as its release rate. You can apply one pound of nitrogen per thousand square feet of an organic fertilizer, uh, whether that's chicken litter or biosolids or uh, whichever you choose. And you can do the same thing on, say you do it on the front yard, you know, one pound to in uh, organically. And then in the backyard, you do one pound of in inorganically, like with, with urea. The urea is gonna look so much better right out of the gate because you, you understand the release pattern. In the front, it may take three months for that lawn to start to show signs that even a fertilizer application was done. So it's very unpredictable as to how it's going to release. In that same instance, it's gonna be very slow. 
Organic fertilizers are naturally slow because soil microbes have to consume the organic matter in order to be able to break it down into uh, ammonium and nitrate for the plants to use. The other thing with organic fertilizer, it relies so heavily on uh, microbes in order to produce uh, usable nutrients for, you know, for, for the turf grass to have usable nutrients that in periods where microbial activity is going to be very slow. So extreme heat and, and cold weather, microbial activity is going to be next to non-existent. So at that time, you're going to get absolutely no control, no release from your fertilizer at all. So if you do it in an application, then uh, you're not going to get any activity from it until temperatures come back closer to a moderate. Um, so, you know, you can apply it four times a year with the different seasons, but the only time you're really going to get action from it will be in that moderate soil temperature range. Um, the other thing is going to be cost. Organic fertilizers are very expensive per pound of actual nitrogen compared to um, in, in organic fertilizer. So uh, you may be looking at paying, you know, two, three, or four times the cost of using an organic fertilizer versus an inorganic fertilizer. Uh, it's not to say that organic fertilizers have priced themselves out of the market, but it's close if you went with just a pure organic fertility program. I mean, it, there's no way you can really structure it for the exact same price as you would uh, to run a, a pure synthetic program. So it is expensive. And and then kind of this, this last thing I wanted to touch back on is the fact that Plants do not know the difference between organically sourced nutrients and inorganically sourced nutrients. But there is a distinct advantage to using organic fertilizer. So if a plant can't tell the difference, why use an organic fertilizer? And the reason is for the sheer soil building properties of organic fertilizers. Um, if you deal with less than perfect soil, you are going to be able to slowly, with time, restructure that that existing soil. You know, so turf grass roots, we want to get you know into that two to three inch range or even deeper. And uh, if you've got just hard, compacted, unbreathable clay in those two three inches, it the turf grass is always going to have a bit of a struggle trying trying to perform. Whereas with time over a two, three, four, five year period of using an organic fertilizer supplement, uh, the, that two to three inches can be restructured with that deco decomposing plant material um, with the, the higher concentration of soil microbes. Um, and so ultimately with an organic fertilizer program, what you end up doing is you end up creating a a micro environment, a stronger, healthier micro environment in the soil uh, where, you know, every time you cut the grass, you're recycling that, that leaf tissue back into the ground. That leaf tissue is going to be decomposed by the soil microbes that exist there. That decomposition process is going to leave you with ammonium and nitrate uh, readily available for the turf grass to use. Therefore, it's going to stimulate new growth, then it gets cut, it's recycled back into the ground. So now you have this, this budding cycle that takes place. Plus, on top of that, you're, you're putting down, you know, more biosolids. That's going to be, you know, a little bit higher concentration of, of nitrogen as it's decomposed by the microbes. Again, stimulating more growth. So, you know, there's a, a, a nice cycle there that actually takes place. However, where the, it comes into an issue of being practical is the amount of time that takes to develop. Uh, this is not something you can go out in one season and you know put down 300 pounds of whatever organic fertilizer and well, one month later you're gonna have the best lawn for the next six years. That, that's not how it's gonna happen. Um, you know, organic fertilizers are gonna take that approach towards building soil structure where inorganic fertilizers will do they do not do it at the extent organic fertilizers do. They're simply providing a nutrient to be utilized then, and then it's done. It's out of the soil. 
it's not going to linger. Uh, now, with the grass clippings that work its way back into the ground, there are going to be soil microbes there that can break that down. And so you are stimulating good things in the soil by, by using fertilizer in general. However, by utilizing an organic fertilizer, it's gonna happen at a much more alarming rate. And whereas, you know, with a, with a synthetic fertilizer, you may be looking at a, you know, a five, six, up to 10 year period for you to restructure your, your soil. Uh, you may get that same result in three, four, five years using an organic fertilizer. I guess the most the most telling thing here would be uh, one of the studies that was done on cotton. Cotton actually has a 17% higher yield using chicken litter versus synthetic fertilizer. And it's not because um, chicken litter is going to provide anything nutrient wise that can't be applied synthetically, what it comes down to is that chicken litter is actually going to work towards conditioning the soil, uh, you know, helping bump that cation exchange capacity, which in turn is going to give you a better performing plant, thus a higher yield. So anyway, y'all, that's going to be my video on organic versus synthetic fertilizer. Uh, I just kind of wanted to touch the, the highlighted points there. Uh, it, again, there's there's a lot of room for debate in this. It's still being researched extensively, but in my opinion, you know, they both have their advantages. They both have their disadvantages. I feel like used in conjunction with one another, a hybrid approach is going to give you your best results possible. Again, with an organic uh, program, you know, you're looking at multiple, multiple, multiple years, and that can be a tough sell. Whereas if you're using a straight synthetic program, you can probably get two, three years of great results before you have to start really changing the way you're doing things, whether that's going to have to be directly amending the soil or you know applying products to minimize salt contents. So every program is gonna have its advantage. Every program is gonna have its weakness. It's just gonna be identifying those weaknesses in your program and making sure you've got steps in place to be able to counteract them. And that's gonna apply whether you know, you're talking about the chemicals you're using or you're talking about the organic or synthetic fertilizers you're using. All right, y'all, please click, click the subscribe button. Hope you like this video. If you have any questions, feel free to shoot me an email at thegrassfactor at gmail.com. Thanks, y'all. Have a good rest of the week.